Okay, so I've got this uh, Yamaha QY8 music sequencer that uh, um, that uh, I recently picked up in a second-hand store. So it's a device that um, apparently came out in 1994, um, so it's about 20 years old, and um, and it originally cost 225 pounds uh, when it was new. Um, I picked up in the in the second-hand store for a bit less money than that. Um, so it's uh, this is the box and everything in was in there, um, including the device itself, um, which I shall show you in a second. But yeah, the box is still in pretty good condition, which is uh, which is great. Um, but even better, the thing itself is in good condition. So amazingly it's still got the protective plastic on on the on the screen and there isn't a, a scratch on it it's in brilliant condition um the thing that attracted me to it so it's a it's a Yamaha QI8 music sequencer but the thing that attracted me to it was the fact that um that it, it's able to sequence midi notes um and it can control external gear. It's got a MIDI in and a MIDI out. So it's got a headphone out and a DC power in on the back. Um, but it is powered by, also powered by AA batteries, six of those. Um, and on this side there's a volume control slider. Um, and on the other side, the on off. Let's get back the focus. Whoops. Yep, yeah, on off switch. So let's show you what happens. So if I switch it on, I get a little animation. Animation QA8 Yamaha. And there it is. That's up and running. Um it remembers what it was doing last time. Um, which is good. Um, I'm getting a bit of glare here, aren't I? What's, what's that coming from? It's coming from the screen of my computer. There you go, that's better. Um, so the interface is uh, quite an unusual interface. Um, so if I press... Um, the first thing I'm going to do is initialize. So, clear song, enter, clear song 20, enter, right, that's completed that operation. So back to song 20, if I press the play button, you will hear silence. And you can, what you can see on the bottom here, this is what they call the measure, um, so it's like a bar. And you can see it plays through those, it's like four beats to the bar, and then measure goes up and the tempo is set there. Um, so that's just merrily playing along this empty song. Okay, I'm just going to um, give you a quick demonstration of what what, the, what it sounds like. So um, here's the, here's a three and a half mil jack that I've got plugged into my mixer. So if I pop that into the headphone jack, you'll hear what's actually coming out. <laughs> Whoops. I thought I'd just turn that down a little bit. I thought that was quite loud. So what you can hear there is a sort of a disco automatic uh, thing. And the reason why it's got this automatic accompaniment is because of the style setting here. Can you see that? Style. So if I move across to the style section, you can see it's set to style one disco. And it's in um, sound A. So I could change from A, I could change that to B, which is a different sort of section of that song. And how do I get from A to B? With a fill. So that's the fill A to B, and that's the fill 
B to A. There's introduction. And there's also an ending. So they've programmed in these different bits for the song. Um, it's all very clever. Um, introduction and then naturally if I want to change the tempo I can do that which is about lovely and if I wanted to change the style I could change to euro or house or dance So let's say Euro. And then the other great thing is that I can also change the chord. So at the moment it's set to a C minor chord. And I can change that to C sharp minor, D minor, E minor. I can change the chord for that complement. And I can also change it from mi minor, major different chord types. Very clever indeed. But my favourite style, oops, I went for style, is this one called Blank. That's my favourite style. Because I don't really want to use this accompaniment. It's very clever, but I want to use this just to record notes in MIDI and then output them to uh, external gear. So let's press the stop button and go back to the beginning. Now I can program in notes using this section here, um, but it's much easier, I think, to just use a MIDI keyboard and input the notes and record them. So let's show you how we do that. Um, so I'm going to get rid of the box. Just put this here. Um, and what I do is I just grab this cable here. So I have a cable here, which is a simple, I've got it entangled, but it's a simple MIDI cable. There's no trapdoors, it's just a MIDI cable, nothing else to it. It's MIDI on both ends. And I can plug one end into the Yamaha QY8 like that. There you go. That's plugged into the in. And the other end. Plug into a MIDI keyboard. So here's an out from here. So then if I switch on the MIDI keyboard, which is also battery powered. So from the MIDI keyboard I can now play notes and they will automatically be played by the sound engine in here and it's currently set to what sound, let's have a look, part. So I'm using MIDI channel 1 on, the, on this keyboard. So that will send notes to part 1 on here which is currently set to piano. So and if I change the sound from piano, can't see very clearly over there, can we? All oh, right, it's just modifying there. So now piano is flashing, and I can change it to say vibes. And then get a different sound. And then if I changed it to um, WD bass, yeah, FN bass, yeah. So I can change to whatever sound I want. So let's say. Say, for instance, we'll start off with the piano sound. Um, I 
what we can do um, is just record some notes because we could program them in here um, but we can record them. To record what we do is we press the up button here and press enter and then you can see it says quant of so this quantization is currently off and if I want to change the quantization to something else I can change it to a note of whatever length so there's a what's that quaver semi quaver I can't remember but anyway let's try that um, and then if I press um, is it enter no no I think I'll then press this button here and that will actually start the recording it will count me in um, two measures I think so let's try let's try that so we'll put that over there somewhere so I can put the notes in here so if I press that um, I'm trying to get everything on the screen so I press that button there here it's counting me in Play something very tuneless. <laughs> Let's see what happened. So um, it didn't actually record anything because it's uh, well. Let's just have a listen. Oh, because it was playing. So we can still got the style there. Let's change the style to blank. Okay, start again. Why is it doing that? We want blank. Start at the beginning. Switch it to blank. Play. There you go. So there's some notes there in, in there. You can hear it's quantized. Um, and it. it that's annoying that, but it keeps going back to disco. Why does it do that? That's annoying. So I'm on song 20. My style is set to disco, and I'm going to make that. Not disco, I want to make it blank. Press enter. It's like it's that's blank, okay. So if I take the measure from one to two, uh, to two, to three, four, five, six, seven, eight, okay. So now it's blank all the way through. So if I go back to the beginning. Yep. So I've got six measures worth of uh, notes recorded there. Lovely. Um, so what I could do, let's say I wanted to take those six notes and um, and loop them. I can very easily put some um, repeat marks in. So let's go into that section. So now we get to the top cursor thing, move that over to the repeat area, and then move down into the repeat section. So in measure one, I've got currently a blank. So if I press the plus one, there's a re beginning repeat mark. Press enter, that will apply that. That's put a little dot there at the beginning of this measure. If I then go to measure, oops, go along to measure four, for instance. Back up here, I can put in a repeat mark, that's an end repeat, and um, it's going to do it two times, so I could make it four times. So it will play from measure one to the end, from the beginning of measure one to the end of measure four, and it will repeat four times. So press enter, 
and you see there's no, no dots there at the moment press enter it's put a dot at the end so that's where that measure is the end of measure 4 sorry that's where the repeat mark is at the end of measure 4 so now it will play that four times There we go. So it's playing it, and that will yeah, that will play it four times. And then it just carries on to the next uh, section. So it played um, measure five, measure six. Um, so let's, uh, and I'll say I can I can be as complicated as I want to there. So. If I was to say, right, I want to go to measure five and put in another repeat mark that starts a repeat. I can put that in there and then I can go to bar, uh, bar six, oops, and put an end repeat on the, on there and do four of those. Enter, and I'll put that in there. So it'll play four of one to four, and then four of one to one to uh, five to six. Let's give that a go. Don't need this keyboard anymore. And then it's gone on to seven eight, which is all blank. So there we go. That's um, a quick demonstration about what that does. And of course, if I change now. If I change the sound, so let's go up to the um, part one, it's currently piano, and let's make that, say that vibe thing again. So there we are. Um, Right, so then let's get Volker, let's get the Volker out. Right, so I'm going to unplug this MIDI cable from the input because I'm no longer inputting notes into the Yamaha QY8. And I'm going to plug it in instead into the output. And I'm going to unplug this because I don't want to have the sound from this anymore. So let's put that over there. Let's get out a Volker. about the background noise um, so yeah so here's the that same MIDI cable there are no trapdoors it's that same MIDI cable and the output from the Yamaha is now going to go into the input of the uh, Volker keys and I'm going to use the headphone jack of the Volker keys capture the sound from there. So let's put these two devices together. Let's get these cables out of the way. Switch on the Volker. Volker's switched on and if I press That's the uh, the Volker, so that's that's obviously working. A bit uh, uh, 
Um, yeah, let's give that a go then. So, put the sequencer to the beginning, press play. See, that's what's got wrong here because I've already got a sequence programmed into the Volker. So I'll clear that off. Right, let's try. Maybe that will make. are being reproduced on the Volker keys. See, and that's it's as if the Volker keys suddenly has a, pa a song mode. Um, so there we are, there's a little demonstration of uh, um, of what you can do. Let's take that actually, let's take that one step further. Um, so because the Volker Keys is um, um, is getting the um, the MIDI information from um, for the, of the tempo from the from the MIDI, I can take another Volker. So here for instance is um, the Volker Beats. So I could use the sync out. Uh, use the sync out of the uh, Volker keys. And plug that into the sync in of the Volker beats. Um, and then if I grab myself another input into my mixer, plug that into the Volker Beats, switch that on, uh, remember this time to clear everything that's on there, then I could uh, try, so let's go, let's try step mode, let's put four on the floor, or part one kicks and closed hats, a bunch of those, uh, snare, there's a stereotypical, stereotypical um, pattern isn't it? So if I unplug that and press play what will happen? That's going really fast isn't it? Say 120. So there you go, there's a stereotypical beat. So yeah, let's plug the plug that into there. That's doing it's going a different tempo now, isn't it? And I can twiddle the tempo here and nothing happens. Where's the tempo coming from? It's coming from the MIDI. Oh. 
can see it affects obviously the vocal keys but it also affects the beats so I can then have as many vocals chained up as I want to and they will uh, they will stay in sync doesn't stop it though, does it? Oh well. Um, yeah, so there you go, there's um, a little demonstration of what you can do with some Gorg Volkers and the, uh, the Yamaha QY8, um, which was a bit of a bargain from the second hand shop. Um, but yeah, it works, It's you can use it to <laughs> uh, program in your MIDI notes and um, quite a cool little uh, hardware sequencer to have um, controlling my uh, my Volker bits and bobs. So there we are. Thank you very much for watching. Um, any questions, um, put them down below, I guess. <laughs> Thanks for watching.